It's strange, though, Willie, because uh, we're going to have on Keith Hernandez after you. And mm -hmm. Keith said, you have to hit a guy who's that hot. And I still don't understand that. I mean, no other sport do you li like punt. Like if LeBron James but, was scoring 40 in the third quarter, you wouldn't punch yeah. him in the face. But but so, I understand a little bit what Keith's talking about because that was the area we played in. And, and, and I'm not, I don't know if he really meant to hit the guy. I mean, that would happen. I mean, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, Harmon Killebrew, those guys knew that if they were hot, they would get plunked. And they would just walk to first base and maybe the other team would retaliate without the umpire getting involved. But we kind of accepted that back in the day. Uh, I, I think what Keith meant more than anything, he can speak for himself, is that, you know, you almost expect, when you're playing and hitting the ball that well, you almost expect to get dusted. And it's almost like a badge, a badge of honor. It's almost like, okay, that's respect, if you will, in a way. But but it, but we understood what was happening at the time, and that was the norm. And nowadays, you don't see it, so it's like a play at second base. You mentioned Hal McCray. You get taken out at second base, and it's just a regular slide, but it's a sense you don't see good takeouts, everyone gets crazy about it. Oh, my God, what's going on? He's going after him. But that was the norm. So if you see it happen over and over and over in the game, then you don't react to it. And, and nowadays, you don't see a lot of the stuff that Keith and I experienced when we were playing. And it is a different game. It's a different world completely. And I just wonder, what's the proper punishment for this guy? How do you stop this thing from going on? You know, Buster only made a great point, Willie. You know, mm -hmm. it always seems like the batters are the ones that are the pinatas. Because if a pitcher's pitching well, does a batter go out there in the eighth inning and, like, hit him with a bat on the arm? No. No. No, no, you, you're right about that. You know, everybody's very demonstrative nowadays, and with the bat flipping and the guys styling the way they do, I like to see more pitchers punch guys out. I mean, if you, you know, if you're gonna, you know, do it one way, do it the other way. This way, it's acceptable. No one feels you're being shown up. They just feel that that's a part of the game because the game is evolving into a lot of the the showing off and a lot of look at me and all that kind of stuff. So, if if they have a problem with the, with with that, then just do it on both sides. If I punch you out, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna be demonstrative on the mound. If if you want to hit a ball 900 miles and, and take your time and walk around the bases, that's just the way it is and let it slide like that. But, you know, it's, it's just a different kind of game, and, and you have to control some of it. But I think you have to teach pitchers how to pitch inside. And players, you know, it's okay to pimp every once in a while on the field if you're a hitter. But just if you use common sense sometimes and just not make a mockery out of it and make it to the point where you're showing somebody up. I think players get upset when they feel like they're being shown up. And I think they can kind of monitor that stuff a little bit. All right, so let's get to the 98 team. You were the third base coach. You have six championship rings at last count, two mm -hmm. as a player and four as a coach. Mm -hmm. um, so you've seen a lot of great teams. You, you played against a lot of great teams. Uh, everyone I talked to, most everyone said that's the best team they've ever seen. Willie, was 98 the best team you've ever seen? It's the best team I've ever Coach, that but <laughs> I don't know. I, I played on some great teams in the 70s, and, and I know I, I was getting trouble. And I don't really like you know, comparing errors because I think that when you go from the 70s to 80s to 90s, and then even the 2000s, it, the, the game has changed in a lot of ways. So I, I think as a player, to me, the 77, 78 team is, is the best team I've ever played on. We didn't have as much talent maybe as a 98 team, but we, we very a lot of similarities. Though Michael, there was ways that we went about playing the game, fundamentally sound. I just if I can use a a track and field analogy, it was like, you know, we were a great relay team. You, you passed the baton. You've heard that before. Mm -hmm. You know, keep the line moving, pass the baton. That 98 team was unbelievable, Michael, the way they went about their business. We had great players. You know, we had uh, from top to bottom, whether it was Knobloch or it was O'Neal or Jeter, Tino, uh, going down the line. Everyone understood that, you know what, it's not about ego. It's not about who gets the most, the most stats and who's the best player. It's about how we win the game and, and how we lean on each other. It was a joy to watch these kids play the game the way they did because as a player who's been in the 70s and 80s and watched some great teams, it reminded me a lot of the teams that I played on with Thurman and Nettles and Roy White, Mickey Rivers, myself going on the line. It brought back that kind of Yankee magic where we play for each other and we played as a Yankee team. We've had on this week um, David Wells, Jorge Posada. I've spoken numerous times with Cone and, and O'Neill. And the one thing they always tell me about that 98 team is that they really expected to win every single game, and when they lost, they were shocked. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, we, we did. I mean, you can see and feel it in the clubhouse. We were so uh, 
consumed with, with getting back to the championship. After 96, we got a nice taste of it. It felt great. In 97 was a rough year for us, but we were really hell-bent on getting back to being champions again. And we got off to a little bit of a slow start. We weren't big on meetings and things of that nature, but we had a few meetings where guys really just expressed themselves, and, and we kind of called each other out about playing good Yankee baseball, being unselfish. And then once we got on a nice little roll there, you know, we got to some ups and downs during the season, which happens. But I think I remember Daryl, when Daryl took sick, when Daryl had the colon cancer, that really brought us together. That really kind of galvanized the team. I remember us coming together and really uh, uh, playing for each other and playing to, to uh, you know, to, to lift Daryl and, and up in that situation. So uh, there was a lot of things that happened during the course of the season because it's a long grind. But I just remember very, very vividly uh, us me us really taking off, you know, around that time that Daryl got sick and we started to really play good baseball around that time. And, and as you know, we just steamrolled right through the playoffs. One in four at the start. And Posada talked the other day with us about mm -hmm. Joe Torrey had to hold a meeting. Were you part of that meeting? Yeah, yeah, I remember it very vividly, you know, and we didn't have many, you know, we, you know, we just kind of sat around and just looked at each other and just started very openly just talking about what we need to do to start getting back to playing good, solid baseball. I mean, we all knew what we had to do, but there are times during the course of the season, and when you're starting off at the beginning of the season, Michael, you know, you want to get off to a good start, and sometimes you get a little selfish, you know, you want to make sure you get your hits and, and your home runs, just to kind of get off to a nice start. It's human nature, but I thought we got away from our game, and then we started to talk about, you know, being on selfish and, and playing good defense and, and really everyone just kind of, again, passing the baton and making sure that as long as we won the game, that was the most important part of it. We didn't, the most important part, we didn't really care. We got the glory. So uh, we had a couple little little things during the season where we kind of had to reset a little bit. But for the most part, I was always confident this team understood uh, what we had to do to get to the promised land. And we knew how to kind of, you know, regroup and, and get back on track. And, and, and Joe did a great job with the staff. We had a great staff and everyone understood our roles and our jobs, and, and that's what made that team so special. Uh, you know, we would look at each other. I mean, we would give each other evil eye if we felt like a guy wasn't getting after it, he wasn't hustling, or if he wasn't taking a walk, or he wasn't getting the guy over. You know, we would call each other out a little bit. That reminded me of the 77, 78 teams. We would get, not that get in each other's face, but we would we would kind of, you know, you know, you know, call each other out every once in a while. We felt like we weren't playing winning baseball. It's so funny, Willie, because you said you think 77 to 78 is better. And we've had Daryl on, and he said, I think the 86 Mets would beat the 98 Yankees. So it's almost like territorial. The teams you play for, you think are better, right? Yeah, well, but you try to be realistic about it, too. I mean, you know, I just think that it's hard to compare because the talent level is so different. And we, you play the game differently at times. You know, we were typical, you know, National League, not, not total National League, but we played baseball with the little things. You know, we, we, we did a little hit and running. We, we ran a little bit. You don't see that as much anymore. Uh, we had great players, but we had a lot of depth on our team where guys like, you know, Brian Doyle or, or you know, uh, uh, you know um, Paul Blair could come in the center field and play center for Mickey Rivers and Jim Spencer would take over for Chris Chambers. Not household names, not great players, but they knew how to play the game and pick each other up. Uh, today you have more more, an abundance of depth than you have guys who, who could be starters on most teams. So that's why it's hard to compare sometimes because there's more talent. Uh, these guys are unbelievable athletes, but I, I don't think anyone played the game as fundamentally sound as we did and knew how to play the game intelligently. Now, before I let you go, I want to I want to give full disclosure, Willie. So mm -hmm. you're coming on the air, my phone lights up, and it's a text from your wife. <laughs> and she right? says, <laughs> she said, Willie told me he's coming on your show, give him a hard time. Oh, and I man. said, I can't. I like him too much. And she writes back. She goes, come on. I don't even like him that much. <laughs> well, so she's I, always giving me a hard time since she figured somebody else would do it, I guess. Right. So I wouldn't do it. Break. I just can't. <laughs> That's okay, Mike. Mike, you can bust me anytime, man. I love you, man. All right, I'll see you Saturday. <laughs> yes, looking forward to it. I can't wait to get back with my boys. Uh, you know, it's a special group, and uh, we're going to party a little bit. We got a nice party Friday and Saturday night, so we're going to enjoy it, man. I'll be at the one Saturday. All right. Well, so look I'll party with you. And maybe we'll get you out on the dance floor, maybe. Maybe. Sounds good. Sounds <laughs> okay, good. Right. Don't dare me. All right, bro. <laughs> See good you. Thanks, Willie. See you guys. Take care, buddy. See you soon. All right.